want to tell us? Oh my God. We were here last week, eh? Have we forgotten? Okay, should I point out some people to tell us? Yes. We should pray that faith will not fail us. Very important. Because some people are falling out of faith. They are no longer in the journey of faith. They are just, their body is just there, but they are far from walking by faith. Yes, what again? Pray that we do not, we do not get into temptation. We pray that we do not enter into temptation. Temptation will come, but we will not enter it. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't you think you have to pray for believers? The Bible at, uh, encourages us to pray for one another. That we don't remember, but we pray for only ourselves. You see? Pray for one another. Pray for the government, the, the rulers. Second Timothy 2 2 tells us, encourage us to pray for our elders, the rulers. That God, people that govern us, our, our father, our mother, our grandparents, hallelujah. Yes, there is one special one that I did not point out. It, it means a lot of people don't keep this record, okay? Please be keeping record so that you go over again and again. Hallelujah. Before I move into effect of the Holy Ghost in the course of change, there's one thing I omitted, which I want to uh, quickly go through. In Luke chapter 6, verse 28, somebody read for us. Luke 6, 28, please participate. Join in this journey. Luke chapter 6, verse 28, somebody else Read, uh, read for us Matthew 5 11 to 17. Luke 6 28. If you are not reading, I'm going to read. He said, Bless those who curse you. Mm -hmm. Pray for those who mistreat you. Okay. Did you see that? When you are mistreated, what do you do? You give it back. You show the person that mistreats you, isn't it? But the Bible encourages us to pray for them. What do you pray for? Pray that God will bless them. Not the way people take it to be. My enemy is my enemy. I'm going to cause fire from heaven to devour that my enemy. No. The Bible, Jesus said, pray for them. Those who mistreat you. Have you been mistreated before? Mistreated by family uh, members? Mistreated by friends? Mistreated by uh, colleagues at work? God said, pray for them. You, do, you don't need to, to, to mistreat them back or pay eye for an eye, tooth for an tooth, but pray for them, those who mistreat you. When you pray for them, what will happen? God will cause a call of fire upon their head. Hallelujah. It is not your responsibility to revenge. I hear people say, Dad, 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 Dad. Who is to die? God is not going to kill them. He loves them. Put your hands together for that. That is what I forgot to share with you. I remember in those days when I really got saved. I didn't know much about the Bible yet. But I just heard that I must preach the gospel. 
I must evangelize. I started from my household and I went out to my neighbors. When I went to my neighbors, they mistreated me and it was so painful. They say, you were not get out. You know, you know those type of languages that you receive from or insult you receive from people out there that think that they are better than you. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit just told me, pray for them. I never knew that it was in the Bible. Pray for them. I went home, knelt down home, and I prayed for them. Today, most of these, those family members are born again. They are worshipping God right now. Hallelujah. When I saw them on the Facebook, I said, glory be to God. It's not good to just shy away from neighbors. But do what you can. Sow seed of the gospel. You never know how it will germinate. So what we want to uh, talk about this uh, morning is the effect of the, the Holy Ghost in the cause of change. I want to let us know that the Holy Ghost play a major role in the course of change. We were born again today because the Holy Ghost introduced to us who Jesus is. The Holy Ghost is so necessary and is what we need today to change the world. Is what we need today to change the lives of people. It's what we need today for a change to, to come to effect in any areas of our lives. It's the Holy Ghost that we do the work. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost play a major role in your changing today from day to day. Don't think that it is because of your intellect. That is why I'm changing. No, it is the Holy Ghost who, who is playing that role of changes in your life. If we need changes in our situation, that is who we need. The Holy Spirit. He has done so much for us and is still doing great things for us. Do you know why Satan cannot uh, bring his uh, governing into the world today or make manifest what he is planning to do in, 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 in when the when the Christian lives here you know who is restraining him it is the Holy Ghost that is restraining the devil not to be able to uh, come to effect and do his last job Till we come back with Jesus the second time. Hallelujah. It is the power of the Holy Ghost that is restraining, putting restraining order. You know when a, uh, when a husband is beating a woman and, and or is abusing the children, the woman can go to the court today and get a restraining order, isn't it? Yes. yes. So that that man will never come to that house again and abuse uh, the, the wife. So that is how the Holy Spirit is putting a restraining order. Wow. Hallelujah. I never thought of this. Yeah. That is how the Holy Spirit is putting a restraining order to the devil not to touch us. Yeah. Yeah. Talk my anointed and do my prophet no harm. The Holy Ghost is so jealous of the church. He's so protective. Glory be to God. We give God all the glory. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. I know some of you may not understand maybe one or two that does not, you may not understand 
the, the, the power of the Holy Ghost residing inside of you. But I want to let you know, as many of you that are watching, as many of you that are here, that doesn't know who the Holy Spirit is, the Holy Spirit is God in a believer. Is God in, a, in, in us. If you are a, a child of God born again, the Holy Ghost lives inside of you. Amen. And not only living inside of you, he lives everywhere. He's omnipresent. Hallelujah! Amen. It's not limited. The Holy Ghost is inside of us and also is not limited. He's everywhere the same time. And that is why when uh, Jesus was about to go, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will tell the Father to send you the comforter. That is the Holy Ghost. Can we quickly look at uh, um, John chapter 26? He said, it is expedient that I go away. If I don't go away, you won't receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not come. 16, verse 7. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for, for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you who is speaking here jesus jesus said it is a spirit that i go so that the holy ghost will come to you and live inside of you and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness of judgment of sin because they believe not in me or me of righteousness because I go to my father and he see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged do you know the devil is already judged that is why we can put him where he belongs he belonged under our feet forever hallelujah and the state is that a thing said, Habit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that he is, he will speak, and he will show you things to come. Did you see that the Holy Spirit is very important in our lives? Yeah. It's very, it's very, it's very expedient. I mean, it's expedient that we uh, give honor to to Him. It is a very expedient that we cooperate with the Holy Spirit that God has given to us. If we do not cooperate with Him, there is nothing He can do. Hallelujah! Amen. He will show us things to come. He will guide us into all truth. Glory be to God. No wonder the Bible says in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter uh, 48 verse 17, he says he, he is the one that teaches us to profit and he is the one that leads us in the way we should go. And it is the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, if that same Holy Ghost who raised up Jesus Christ, he is the one that raised up Jesus from the dead, he said, if he dwells in you, he's going to quicken your mortal body. That when you are weak, you are strong. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, he, he is our guidance. He is our leader. The Bible says, as many as are led by him, uh, they become what? The, that means the sons of God are led by the Holy Spirit. Imagine, for example, our father, when God called him 
out of his kindred into the promised land, the, what he has promised him. And he said, if you should obey me, follow me, God, I will guide you. In, I will bless those who blesses you. I will curse those who curses you. And Abraham was led by God into the unknown. What I'm trying to say is this. We need as believers to cooperate with the Holy Spirit at all times. Amen. To see the change that we need in our business, in our lives, in our family, in our circumstances. Amen. Every one of us, we are believing God for a change in one way or the other. Amen. Let me tell you, there is nobody that we can change on it. I've heard some people saying, I will change him. I'm going to change him. I'm going to change him. Like for example, as husband and wife, you cannot change your husband. You cannot change your wife. The one that plays that role of changes, or of change, is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If we cooperate with him, imagine Abraham, if he did not cooperate with him, did you think do you think that Abraham will, will be able to leave poverty? Do you think that the Abraham will become Abraham that we are talking about today? He received a change from Abraham to Abraham because he cooperates with the Holy Spirit. What I'm begging the church is, I'm, I'm also part of the church. And what I'm begging the church is, let's cooperate with him. Let's cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we do not cooperate with him, we will not be guided. Imagine when Abraham decided to uh, cooperate with the wife, not with God. He got Ishmael. And we don't want to repeat that again and again in our life. We get Ishmael when we don't cooperate with him. And Ishmael is a term in the life of the set apart children of God today. Ishmael has become a term in the flesh of believers today. Ishmael, they are the one fight, uh, killing one, uh, everywhere, bombing everywhere. Ishmael. Because of a mistake of one man. So let's not make the same mistake today. Because you will get that Ishmael. Fine, the Ishmael will be blessed, but it will be a problem. Because God did not guide you into it. That is why whatever you do, give it to God. Give it to God to guide you. Give it to God to lead you. I wouldn't mind if God is guiding me and I am progressively going than just going boom into that space where I cannot handle. It is better I go, if I don't hear him, it's better I stand where I am until he tell me now go this way or go that way. Than just rushing into a, a thing which is not guiding me to. Because he's not the one to suffer it. I'm the one to suffer the consequence of my not allowing him or cooperating with him. I've seen what I suffered so many times when I don't cooperate with the Holy Spirit. I lose money when I don't cooperate with the Holy Spirit. I lose the best when I don't cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Who is bearing the consequence? It's me. So, child of God, children of God, I beg you. This hour we are, we are right now. We need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And how do you cooperate with the Holy Spirit when you don't know him? There is another thing. You might be born again you don't know him. You might be born again 
50 years and you don't know him. So it is very imperative that you know the Holy Spirit. How do you know the Holy Spirit? In fellowship. You know him in fellowship. You know him. You, it's a constant fellowship with him. Constant praying in the Holy Ghost. Constant um, studying his word. Constant studying his ways. Constant hearing the word of God. Let me tell you, when I got, uh, the moment I got born again, not long, I, I started hearing God. Audibly. The first time I heard him audibly, I thought he's going to remain like that. I will be hearing him audibly. Hearing him audibly. But today, he's not speaking to me like that. He, he speaks to me with inner witness. And when he speaks to me, it's like tuning in something inside of me. And when he does that, I just obey. So let's learn to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. When you cooperate with the Holy Spirit, you will not miss anything. Hallelujah. I said when you cooperate with him, you will not miss anything that God has for you. Hallelujah. Some of us are suffering the way we are suffering today because we are not cooperating with him. We don't know him. If, if your heart is, is, is wanting to know God in your worship with him, in your fellowship with him, he will reveal himself. He will reveal truth to us. The Bible says he will reveal truth to us. He will guide us into all truth. Glory be to Jesus. So the Holy Spirit need we need to cooperate with him because he plays a very major role in our changes. When we got born again, it was him. It was it's still him that is changing things today. If we don't cooperate with him, we will not see the change that we are looking for. How many of you want a change in your life? Yes. Take this as your priority. Will you, we, that is what the Bible says. We cannot do without him. Without him we can't do nothing. In John chapter 15. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now. In Romans chapter 8. We're talking about effect of the Holy Ghost. In the cause of change. The effect of the Holy Ghost in the cause of change. In Romans chapter 8 verse 26. 26 and 27. The Bible says likewise. The spirit also helpeth. That is part of his duty in our lives. He helps us. In the areas that we cannot help ourselves. It's like a child who is trying to walk. Sometimes it needs to, you know, it needs the mom's hand or daddy's hand to get up. It needs daddy or mommy to help him in any area that he needs help. That is not able to do. So that is how the Holy Spirit of God work with us, deals with us. He helps us in the area we cannot help ourselves. There are so many areas we cannot help ourselves. This is one of the areas. The Bible says, likewise, the Holy Spirit also helped our infirmity. What it, that infirmity means is weakness. It helps our weaknesses. Everybody have a weak point in his or her life. We would like him to help us in our weaknesses. So this is one way he helps us in our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. There are, there are things 
that we ought to pray for, but we don't know how or what to pray for. But the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, but the Holy Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. With groaning which cannot be uttered. I gave an example of Hannah the other time. Hannah will always go with the family to the to the um, to the temple to pray. At this day, he was so overwhelmed with you know intercede intercession for what she was believing God for. And the Bible says. He, she was uttering ways which cannot be heard. He, she was uttering murmuring things because she went into the dimension which and tapped into the spirit realm to, 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 to demand for that which he, she, 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 she was believing God for. There comes a time in our lives that we really need certain things to, to change in our lives. And we, we graduate from that ordinary prayer and go deeper with the Holy Ghost. We allow the Holy Spirit to take charge of our prayer. That is praying in tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And as you get into that realm of not even noticing who is around you, of not even noticing whether you are sitting down or standing up, of not even noticing who are around you, then you are making a, an intercourse with the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about natural intercourse. Please get me right. Those people who are immoral, they will be thinking uh, of something else. I'm talking of, of having fellowship. Having fellowship with him. Dialoguing. Demanding. Claiming what belongs to you. When you get to that realm, it doesn't really matter. How many hours that you spend? It doesn't really matter what you are wearing. What you are wearing doesn't matter to any uh, to you there. What you, you what what you are saying you you don't even understand. Glory be to God. Hannah got there, and the, the God used the mouth of the prince to say to him, hey, "You know what? May God grant you your heart desire." And Hannah got up from that place knowing fully well that he had what she has demanded for. The Bible says she came back the next year to dedicate the baby Samuel that she got from that prayer. And we we'll just want to tell somebody here that if you have been through this stage of life, you have been through you have been dialoguing with the Holy Ghost. You will be speaking to him. You've been in that realm where you get what God has in store for you. Don't give up. It is yours already. Don't change your mind. Don't change your statement. Don't even change what you say about yourself. What will God have already said? Don't let anybody pull you down that you it doesn't belong to you. Don't even allow the devil to for you. He is a liar. He come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What is yours? What God has promised, it is yours. No money, no man, no woman, no boy, no girl, not even government can take what God has given to you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not God somewhere. Which later became a prophet. So, what am I trying to say here? The Bible says, 
when the Holy Spirit helps you in prayer, you make an utterances that man cannot utter. You make utterances that no man knows what you're talking about. Because that is the language of the Holy Ghost. That is the language of the Holy Ghost. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, please, it's for all of us that are born again. It's not for unbelievers. It's for us that are born again. Glory be to God. It's for you. You have the right to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 8, where I was reading, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, 27, it says here that, and he that searched the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. He that searched the heart know what is in the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Did you see that you pray a perfect prayer when you pray in the Holy Ghost? That is why as a child of God, don't be limited by what you see. Make sure that you pray in the language which the Holy Spirit gives to you. And this language, devil does not know it. But when you pray in your understanding, the devil understands it. But this language, the devil does not understand it. Although he is a spirit, he does not understand the language of the spirit because it is God. The Bible says he understands you. In 1 Corinthians, that also takes us to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 to 4. The Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown, unknown tongues, speaketh not to men, but to God. Did you see that there? For he that speaketh in an unknown tongues, that is praying the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 2 to 3. Verse 2 to 4. Sorry. Verse 2 to 4. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongues speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understand him, how bad in the spirit he maketh mysteries. He maketh, he said, that, that mystery means is a secret truth. You do not speak when this when when you pray in tongues, people might be saying like one day we, uh, I don't know who was who was who was leading in, in, in the airway that day, and uh, somebody was asking on the Facebook, what language is that? <laughs> that means the person is not conversant yeah. with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Maybe he's born again. Maybe she was not born again. I said, this is the language of the Spirit. And you need to be born again to receive this language. You cannot receive this, this language. It's not something that you have to mimic somebody for. You cannot mimic the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I know Satan has fake. He has been faking, using his people to fake it. But the true believers have the return. Hallelujah. Because when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, He gives you an utterance to speak in an unknown tongue. Yes. Which no man understands except God does. And you pray in the will of God. You pray perfectly when you pray in the Holy Ghost. But he that prophesy, prophecy, let me tell you, this is what the three things prophecy does. 
Prophecy brings edification, not killing. I see your auntie is the one giving you this problem. That is not prophecy. That is from the pit of hell. Okay, if you are that powerful, why don't you deal with that spirit that, that is using my auntie? And leave my auntie out of the picture. Yeah. If you are that powerful to prophesy, you see, prophecy brings edification. It brings exhortation. It also brings comfort, not discomfort. I'm not the one that wrote it. It's the Bible. That is the word of God. It doesn't bring discomfort. It brings comfort. And verse 4 says, He that speak in an unknown tongues edify himself, and he that prophesy edify the church. But he actually, Paul was telling us that we need also to, 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 to desire this spiritual gift of prophecy. Hallelujah. Do you know that God will have us to prophesy. God will have all of us here to prophesy. If need be. Because prophecy comes by according to his will. Amen. Hallelujah. It comes in by his will. You don't just stand and say, I want to prophesy. It doesn't just happen that way. If he, God has mercy to deliver to the church, to the body of Christ, to somebody, he will have to use his people. He wants us to have the, 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 the spirit of prophecy. And we do have. The spirit of prophecy is living inside of us. That is the Holy Ghost. That is why when you tell somebody, this is what I am hearing. And they will say, how do you know? Because the spirit that you have is the spirit of prophecy. Say the spirit I have, the spirit I have. is the spirit of prophecy. So why will you be running after prophets, prophets to prophesy to you? When you have the spirit of prophecy, laziness, I bind that spirit of laziness in the life of believers all over the world in the name of Jesus. You can also prophesy to yourself. When you, when you speak the word, what are you trying to do? You are prophesying the word. Amen. You are prophesying what God says concerning you. When you said, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus, you are prophesying the word. If you say, I am rich, I am not poor, you are prophesying the word. Hallelujah. If you say I'm on top, I'm not burning, you are prophesying the word. See, children of God, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived waiting for somebody to prophesy to you before you believe what God says. It's already here. The spirit of prophecy is in you. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. If you can put your hands together for Jesus for that. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts of the Apostle chapter 2, I'm just talking about the, the, the effect of the Holy Ghost in the course of change. If you want change in your life, you need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor, I will cooperate with the Holy Spirit. From now on, I will cooperate with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, verse 1, we're going to read from verse 1 to 8, and we're going to also read verse 14, 36, and 41. Okay? This is our major uh, test today. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were one in one accord in one place. 
I want you to mark that. That is why it is very imperative that we cooperate with him. How did they cooperate with him? Jesus instructed them, go to the upper room and wait for the promise from the Father, the Holy Spirit. And they cooperate, they went there and they were there waiting for the gift to manifest. Amen. So, a time will come in your life that the Holy Spirit will direct you to, to leave your friends and be alone with Him. Are you hearing me? As a child of God, we must have that point in our life. From time to time, the Holy Ghost will say, leave right now. And there are sometimes I will be discussing with uh, some issue with certain people. And the Holy Spirit will just say, leave them. Leave them. I don't know what is telling me to live there for. I will truly just listen to what he says. I will live there. I will take excuse and leave the people and go alone. Then, by the time I leave, that is when he will start speaking. And I will I want me to do, instruct me to do one thing or the other. Or I, he just want me to leave that environment that is poisonous. <laughs> Malekala Bradaya. Do you know there are environments that are so poisonous? But it's very toxic. And by the time you live there, you are worse than you left home. You sometimes when you when you are in that environment, don't be shy to say, excuse me, and leave. Because by the time you stay in there, you are more poisonous than you came. Your spirit is down that you came. You are weak that you came. You were happy when you came. But now you, you're no longer happy. Because you have just contact, contaminated yourself. So when the Holy Spirit tells you, you have a prompt in your spirit as a child of God. Leave that environment. Leave that environment. Because it's good for you. It doesn't really matter whether this person is wants to give you a million runs. What the Holy Spirit wants to give you is for, for eternal. It's for eternity. Are you hearing me? Because that million rand you might receive is going to, re, is going to vanish away within couples of days or times. Have you think, haven't you heard about people who receive a lot of a billion, a million rands? And before you know it, they are worse than now uh, what they were before. Because they don't know how to make use of the things. Don't let, don't let the, the things in this world distract you. Don't let this thing, this world, deceive you. We are going to leave them behind. But when the Holy Spirit tells you something, He, he means it. He wants to do a major thing in your life. He wants to do something good in your life. He wants to transform you. He wants to change you. He wants to give you what the man cannot give you. That is why we must cooperate. Look at these uh, uh, the, 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 the apostles. The Holy Spirit, I mean, God, uh, Jesus told them, please remain in the upper room for the, what? The promise to come. They cooperate. They went. And they were obedient in one accord in one place in one accord in one place they were not scattered they were not dis discouraged in one accord in one place the bible says then as they were in one accord in one place something started happening suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it fills all the house where they were sitting. This was his presence. David said, I rather dwell in the house of the Lord than dwelling in the, in the den of thieves. I rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God, that being out there, 
with with one mongers, with thieves, with robbers, with all manner of things, with corrupt people. I rather dwell in the be a gatekeeper. It's actually telling us the presence of God, how important it is in our lives. Please, child of God, don't live anywhere without the presence of God. You know, do you know that the presence of God cannot leave us? We are the one living the presence of God. Because we go where he doesn't want us to go. We do what he doesn't want us to do. You move to where he doesn't want you to move to. We live in and we are on our own. I beg you in the name of Jesus never you go or do something without his presence. David the, the said, where can I go from your presence? If you are in the grave, I'm, I'm there. If I'm in the grave, you are there. If I'm in the pit, you are there. If I'm in the dark, you are there. If I'm in the fire, you are there. Because he is guiding, he is leading. That is why uh, David said, Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh God. Child of God, it is the presence of God that you need for a change. Yeah. Glory be to God. The presence of God in your life can cause that change. The presence of God in your life can change that your husband. The presence of God in your life can change that your wife. The presence of God in your life can change that child. The presence of God in your life just can change your committee. The presence of God in your life just change your community. The presence of God in your life can change your financial position. Are you hearing me, child of God? The presence of God in your life, that is why you should not run away. Don't run away from where God bless you. If God bless you in the midst of darkness, He wants you to shine there so that people in darkness can see the light. People want to run away when there is darkness. You stay in there and give them light. Because you are the light of the world. You stay in there. Do you know why the earth is still here? It's because of the believer. Believers are the salt of the earth. We are here to give the tasteness to the world. We are here to give light to the world. Are you hearing me, child of God? That is why you shouldn't crack up. Oh, the place we are working, there are so many unbelievers. Uh -huh, and therefore, show the light in you. Because it is God who is at work in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. God in you, share, let the light of God in you show manifest. So that they will know the God that you are. That is why the Bible says in the book of uh, 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 Acts of the Apostle chapter 1 verse 8. He said, you shall receive what? You shall receive what? You shall receive what? After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses. Did you see that? He said, it's not saying you shall be a witness. He said, you shall be witness. You, you, were not me, not me. I am a witness. A witness. I be a witness. I be witness, not a witness. That is why Jehovah witness. Sorry to say, I'm not against them. Being a, you are witnessing uh, Jehovah to people. God wants you yourself Amen. to be to be witness. Amen. Your lifestyle should be a witness. Amen. Your the words you speak should be a witness. It should be a witness. The life you live should be witness. The, the, your dressing should be witness. 
The way you eat should be witness. The way you interact with people should be witness unto God. Did you see that? We are so quick to witness when we are not witness. There is difference between being a witness and be witness. People should watch you and say, I want to be like Jesus. Just like that woman is. Just like that man is. Not when you come, everybody is running away. What are you becoming? What are you? You are not a witness of darkness. A witness, a, a witness to of the of the devil. People should be attracted to God because of you. You should be an ambassador. You should be an, an embassy where people should come through and go to the country where we belong. And where we belong is heaven. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. So, the Bible says that Jesus, I mean, the uh, apostles, they were in one accord in one place. And then there came a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole place. The presence of God was there. And there appeared unto them clothing tongue like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with what? With what? With what? Not with inyama. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, with the presence of God. I thank God for the presence of God in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. As they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues, as the Holy Spirit gave that utterance, as the Holy Spirit gave the utterance, as the Holy Spirit gave the utterance, they did not manufacture speaking in tongues, they did not imitate speaking in tongues, they were speaking in tongues because the Holy Spirit gave them utterances, gave them utterances. Hallelujah! God will give you utterances, God will give you utterances, the manifestation of your utterances of God in your life in the name of Jesus. Utterance is the build, all transits to do things, all transits to, 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 to excel, all transits to help one another, all transits to pray, all transits to do things we no man can do. May God give you all transits that will cause you to, to do things that no man has ever done in their life in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, I have not seen, not even heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. What God has been Prepare for them that, 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 that seek that love him. You are the one that love him. There are things that God has prepared for you. There are things that God has prepared for me. There are things that God has prepared for the church which I have not seen, which ye have not heard. He's coming. He's coming, child of God. Something that men have not seen, they have not done before. You will get the utterances uh, to do it in the name of Jesus. Uh, and you will need the name of Jesus. Uh, and God will be glorified in your life. Uh, people are not going to glorify you. People are not going to praise you. But people are just going to glorify the name of the Lord. Uh, they are going to glorify the name of Jesus Christ uh, in your life. Shout hallelujah. Utterances. Utterances. Do you know devil also give people utterances? It's not every utterance that comes from God. There are utterances that also come from the pit of hell. He comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. There are, there are some dreams that people dream. They will say that uh, I dream about this person dead. Do you think that God that comes from God? God is not a, the author of death. God is not the author of confusion. Let me tell you, if you dream and it comes to pass uh, and it's evil, just know it's coming from the pit of hell. Hallelujah! God has come to give 
first life and have abundantly. It's not the spirit of death. It's the spirit of life. I'm not going to die. You are not going to die. You will be filled the mandate of God for your life. You will be filled the mandate of God for your for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are not dying yet. Sickness cannot kill you because Jesus Christ has took care of it. Are you hearing me, child of God? Yes, with lots of money, can we not kill you? Maybe you have lost something. Maybe you have lost relationship. Please, child of God, you are just beginning. Yeah, 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 you are just beginning. You are not going with it. You are not. God Eternity is around for your good. 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 Are you hearing me, child of God? Because He loves you. Because He loves me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All trances. All trances from God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, I will give you all trances that will take you to another level. That's what I'm hearing. He will give you all trances that will take you to another level. Another dimension of God's glory. Shout hallelujah. says and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devoted men out of every nation under heaven now when this was noised let me tell you Holy Ghost is not quiet when the Holy Ghost come upon someone it does not it make noise there is stones all over. People will know that no, there's something happening here. And that attracts more. What brings attraction is the Holy Ghost. Not a attraction to lure someone to do evil. Attraction to, to, to build the kingdom of God. And it was noised around. What just happened in the house? Let me tell you. The devil knows who you are. Child of God, if you don't know who you are, the devil knows it. That is why you need to know who you are. The Bible says we are royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people, a chosen generation, called out of darkness. It all is marvelous. You are peculiar, just as you are. You are chosen. You are a royal priesthood. A holy, holy, holy. You cannot be holy and be unholy. That is what. The Holy Ghost does. And he brought so many people around with different tongues. They gather around. The Bible says in verse 14. I'm jumping now. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. This was the same Peter. Before he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, he denied Jesus three times. But this time around, he was so bold to declare. That Jesus, whom you crucify, he is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is El Shaddai. He is our healer. He is our protector. 
He's our strengthener. He is our provider. This same Jesus that you killed, his blood washed us from sins. Hallelujah. Did you see the change? You cannot say you have Holy Ghost and you are not changing. Eh -eh. If you are not changing, check your life again. Have you truly received Jesus Christ? First of all, when Jesus comes into you, the Bible says, if any man be Christ, it's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Why will you remain the same? When you are a, a, a child of God, when you are born again, it starts from there. If your life is not changing, check your life again. So people are in the church, but they are not in Christ. And do, do I make that statement clear? Yeah. It is better to be in Christ than being in church and not changing. Peter changed from a Peter that denies to a bold Peter. You cannot have the Holy Spirit and you are timid. God forbid. God forbid that you should be timid and don't be bold. A child of God must be bold. Whether you are a child, I mean you are a small, a toddler. Have you heard a, a toddler speaking in tongues? Yes. Immediately they know how to speak. You know, speak their language. They can receive the Holy Ghost. But although it's real, they can't be baptized in the Holy Ghost if they know who Jesus is. Because you cannot be baptized in the Holy Spirit without receiving Jesus. Let's go on. In Acts chapter 14, in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, let's read verse 36. Because I'm going to end with this. There are many, many things to cover. Hallelujah. 36. The Bible said, therefore, let all the house of Israel know as suddenly that God has made that same Jesus, whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 37 says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? I want to I want you to note that prick. They were pricked in the heart. You know what prick is? It means they they, they, they were touched in their heart. Who does that? The Holy Ghost. I'm telling you how the Holy Spirit effects our change. Both in situation, both in our lives, both in our finances, both when he when he touches a thing, it changes. When they were pricked, what did they say? Men said, what shall we do? Then he said, take me to, uh, you know, take me to where you are worshipping. He said, what shall we do first? Devil is so clever. That before you even finish preaching, some people are saying, take, can I go with you to church? You just, you just forgot the necessity to do. That that, that person can leave you today and go to another place 
and change his mind. Now the first thing to do is say, no. What to do is what you should do now, not church. That is why some people are cleave to church, not to Christ. Are you hearing me? You, that person need Jesus. When they were pricked by the Holy Spirit, Peter did not let them go. I said, no, you come again what day or something. He led them to Christ. Let's go on. Where are we? 38. The Bible says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, born again first before the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not the gift of the Holy Spirit first. You must be born into the body of Christ first. First thing first. Then he said, repent and be baptized into the body in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. That is what takes your sins away. The blood of Jesus Christ is what takes your sins away. Repent and be baptized. Then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Say, for the promise is unto you and your children and all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It, it means it's not limited to the Jews only. It is it's also for the Gentiles. For the Gentile world. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you as a child of God, I mean children of God, if you have children, first thing, lead them to Christ. Don't wait for another person to come and play your role. It's your responsibility to lead your children to Christ. As many of you that are watching me, yes, you go to church, you are born again, fine. But what about your children? Fight for them. Fight for them. Tell them who Jesus is, what Jesus Christ has done for you. They are not too small to learn. They are not too, too small to, to, to hear what Jesus Christ has done for them. Let them hear it. And, and lead them to Christ. Ask them, do you want to give your... Don't tell, them, don't tell me they are too small. They are not too small. There is no one that is too small to receive Jesus Christ. Even both young and old. I just want to shift that in. Because it is very imperative. Because you, you don't want to go to he heaven and want your children to go to hell. God forbid. Start from home. Amen. Amen. He said, and your children. The Holy Ghost is for your children also. When, and what do you think that happened when Ananias, um, God told uh, Peter to, 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 to go to Cornelius' house? The Bible says, all he had, all his household, they repented. They gave their life to Jesus Christ. And even as Peter was still speaking, because they have received their, uh, gave their life to Jesus, the Holy Ghost came upon them. They began to speak in tongues. Religion will tell you, you know what? No, 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 no. Stop. You are not supposed to speak in tongues. I have to lead you now. No, they believed. They believed in Christ and the Holy Ghost. Thank God, Peter was not on their way. You know, let me tell you, religion, tradition, we put people away from what God has promised people. Tradition. One of the tradition, you must circumcise. One of the tradition, you should not eat this, you should not eat that. One of the tradition is what you must not wear certain uh, things. You must wear uh, something that cover all, all over. Tradition, we put away people, push people away from God. Don't let tradition and religion keep you aside. Are you hearing me? Amen. Not even allow you using tradition and, and, and also religion to push people aside. Let me tell you, people are getting born again even in Catholic 
Hello, I was from there. I woke up on again. I was still going. But the, the Holy Spirit told me where to go. Hallelujah. Told me where to go. So, God can bypass religion and tradition and touch somebody. Amen. He said it's for you and your children. And even those who will give their life to Jesus, maybe he, he has to come. The Holy Ghost is for me. People are saying that, you know what, the time of Holy Spirit is past. They are lying. Don't let people deceive you. The time of the Holy Ghost is still now. I said the time of the Holy Ghost is still now. Can I hear a witness? Yes, I said, can I hear a witness? Yes, People think when they are baptized in the Holy Spirit, they cannot be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Today, you're going to be on fire. Yes, the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you again. Yes, I say it's going to come upon you again. All those three witnesses that is in your life, they will burnt off in the name of Jesus. I said they will burnt off in the name of Jesus. They will burnt off in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, let, let's finish it to verse 41, then we we'll close. Thank God for the weather. Hallelujah. Is the weather nice? Yes. When it's cold, we complain. When it's hot, we complain. So, the, God is, is tired of hearing our complaint. Yeah. And, and we, want, we want Thanksgiving now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the sun. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse, verse 40 says, And with many others words did he testify and exhort saying, save yourself from this untoward generation. Then, verse 41, then they, they that gladly receive his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Three thousand souls genuinely we are saved put your hands together for Jesus that is the Holy Ghost that is the Holy Ghost when the Holy Ghost is in charge multiplication occur there is manifestation of multiplication hallelujah am I speaking to a people here so the effect of the Holy Ghost to the cause of change is eminent. It's eminent. He will do it here today. He's here. He will do it in your life. I don't know what you need a change for. I don't, I'm not talking about a change to consume in your own lust. I'm talking of a change that will transform people that will transform your generation, that will transform your entire community. If you are here this afternoon and you are you want to buy to this cause of change you want change in your life, you want change in your marriage, you want change in your business, you want change, I want change, hallelujah I want change in my finances, I told you the other time, I want change in my family. I don't know where you want change. The Holy Ghost will make it happen. I said the Holy Ghost will make it happen. He's here right now. Maybe in your study, you want change. It will happen right now. Maybe in your resort, you want change. It will happen right now. Right now, not tomorrow. Don't put God for tomorrow. Now, now. Because, because faith is now. Faith is now. Faith is now. Now faith is the source of of things hope for the evidence of things no sin so we're going to put it to practice you want a change you want a change in your life you want a change in your body you want you you might go to gym and gym your life 
to your that, can, that, that kingdom come. If the Holy Ghost is not in charge, you will go back to where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. You want change? You want change in your clothing, your dressing? You want change? Is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can change it. The Holy Spirit is the cause of change. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet this afternoon. Can I hear the people that knows how to pray in the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost fire is coming upon you. The Holy Ghost fire is coming upon me. The Holy Ghost fire is coming upon the church. The Holy Ghost fire is coming upon your relationship. The Holy Ghost fire is coming upon your business. The Holy Ghost fire is coming upon your finances. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to. The Holy Ghost can change the revolution in your life. In the Every areas of your life, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, don't undermine His power, don't undermine what He's doing in our lives. The Bible says He is at work in us. You are not speaking to me, but you are speaking to God. I'm better. Oh, you speak misery. You speak misery. My secretary. My secretary. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost.
in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Children of God, we just need to learn to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. You learn to hear through constant fellowship. True constant fellowship. Don't undermine that fellowship you have with Jesus. Especially pray in the Holy Spirit. I want to give a, a testimony of what happened to me some years ago. To encourage somebody here. I needed a job in Hatem. And I was working in Pumalanga then. You know, to, to leave your family and leave, you know, to another place to work. I was just alone in three bedrooms. Nobody's in other bedrooms. You know how it is. So empty. Everywhere empty. I told God, this life. I don't understand it. And I told him, I want to go back to Hatem, to Johannesburg, where my family are. And the Lord led me to one place of interview. And I went there. They weren't having uh, vacancy. I went there. There was there was no evil advert. And I went there and I spoke to the secretary. I want to see the matron in this hospital. He said, Do you have an appointment? I said, No. He looks at he look he look at me skeptically. And she went left. I went to the metro. Then the metro said, call her. You know, there we are a lot of white people. And I went and he sat me down. Do you know we were not even discussing? We were not discussing about whether there is uh, appointment or space or whatever. We know what we're discussing about Jesus. Yeah. And I never knew that she was also a believer going to Rema Church. Yeah. And we were discussing. He said, by the way, you want a space here. Well, let me take you upstairs where you will start from. Just like that. Oh, he said, but we don't have vacancy. But let me take you there. And the, the sister that was in the world said, no, we, we will need her two days in a week. I said, no problem. I start from there. Do you know, when I got there, the Holy Spirit told me, that is not where I want you to be. I want you to be in another world, postnatal. I didn't spend two days there. And they called me in the other world to work permanently. Yeah. I don't know who I'm talking to here. Maybe you have lost a job. Maybe there is something that is cooking. They want to fish you out. Don't worry. The Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you into a bigger world. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Maybe you are watching me right now. And you say, "Where? Well, what will I do? Where can I go? The Holy Spirit is going to help you. He's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. He's going to give you that job. That he has prepared for you. Before the foundation of the world. Before you were born. He knows what you are here for. Thank you, Lord. Please, I encourage you, pray more in the Holy Spirit. Because he will guide you, he will lead you, he will keep you. 
He will give you that which you cannot do for yourself. Lift up your hands. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I just want to commit everyone here into your hand. I want you to feel every one of us here. Feel us. Feel us to overflow. Feel us, oh God, that we will not miss our way. Feel us, oh God. Feel us to overflow. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. You are good. You are good. You are good. Feel your people. Feel your people now. Feel your people now. Feel your people now. Feel your people now. Feel us, oh God. Feel us overflow. Feel us to overflow. Feel us to overflow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Feel us to overflow. Let every weakness in our life, every weakness in our body, let every weakness in our family, let every weakness. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus. Weakness of any kind. Be broken. Be destroyed. Be destroyed by the anointing. Be destroyed. Be destroyed by the anointing. Malekete. Malekete le broko shatata. Lique le broko toshoto. Tell God, open your mind and begin to play in the Holy Spirit. Malekete. Some people are not with us, some people are not with us, some people are not with us. You need to be here with us. It's not for some people, it's for all of us. Be filled in the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, Zenebato. 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 Zenda. 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 Yes, 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 yes,
They went through because his mark is upon you. Take it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come, come baby. Come. If you know you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit yet, please come forward. I want to pray for you right now. The Holy Spirit wants to fill you up now. Zakariete mayanda katere de bosie ke te loriana makasta rabasie ke te rende katere de bosie ke te loriana makasta rabasie ke te re bo rende katere de bosie ke te loriana makasie te rende katere de boshi rakande te mayanda katere de bosie ke te riana makasta rabasie ke te rekende te mayanda katere riana masie ke te te re bo rende katere bo boshie te shiyanda makasta rabasie ke te rende katere bo boshie ke te randa kasie te bo boshia te randa se te rende katere re bo boshita rende katere bo boshie ke te rende kasie te re bo boshie te se ke re bo se ke te shiyanda makarie te re ke sie te shiyanda makasta la masie ke te riana makarie te rende katere re bo Rekesiete mayanda 
Cooperating. You are not cooperating with the Holy Spirit. You need to flow. You know, flow with Him. He's always present, always present. Learn to flow with Him. Okay? And those little, little things that hurts Him envy, jealousy, pride. Strive, put it off. Don't you you fight a lot. Put it off. You fight with Mr. A, you fight with Mr. B, you fight with Mr. C. You can't flow with this. Please put it off. Okay. Say this word after me, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. I belong to you. Jesus. You are the Lord of my life. I confess you that Jesus Christ is my Lord. I believe in my heart that is my Savior. He died on the cross. He was buried. On the third day, God raised him from the dead. Thank you, Jesus, for I belong to you. You belong to me. Right now, Every little forces in my life that is hindering the flow of the Holy Spirit in my life. I denounce them now in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit of God, help me to live for you. Help me to cooperate with you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory be to I know you have been blessed by this powerful message. Come and join us in 38 Honey Street, Conatero, Johannesburg, South Africa. For more information, you can contact Bishop Franco Gagba on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you can watch more videos on YouTube.